So most of you must be knowing that uh, GRE has three sections, quant, verbal and AWA, right? So the maximum score that you can score in GRE is 340. So how many of you are actually ready to score that 340? Okay, Rajat says his target is 330 plus. Very nice, Rajat. What about others? What are, what are your target scores? 320 says Kartikeyan. Amit says 335 plus. Kati says 320 plus. Wow, Vedan says he wants to score 340. Nice. Okay, Mridula wants to know how to pre prepare for quant so that she gets 160 plus and 150 plus in verbal. Mridula, sure, we'll uh, tell you. S stay with us. This whole seminar is all about that. Okay. So guys, uh, uh, in quant, the maximum that you can score is 170 and uh, the minimum obviously is 130 because you don't have any negative marking here. And same goes with verbal, you have a maximum score of 170 and AWA is uh, uh, is analyzed between the scale of 1 to 6. Based on your essays, you will be given a score between 1 to 6, okay? See, the best part for GRE is you don't have sectional adaptive test, adaptive uh, sections, okay? So even if you don't know a question, you can uh, skip that question and uh, you can go move forward to the second or the next question. All right, there's no negative marking in GRE, and uh, uh, unlike GMAT, you don't have sectional. Uh, I mean, the next question does not depend on the first question that you answered. Okay, you have different. You have different sections that are adaptive. Okay, meanwhile, Sandeep wants to know when should I register, Sandeep. Uh, if you have questions like these, as in when to uh, register for GRE and uh, how to prepare for that, please be with us. We will be answering all your doubts. Okay? Yeah, Arvaz, we will uh, surely explain more about AWA. Just stay with us. Okay, so moving forward to the GRE pattern, we have two sections each in quant, verbal and AWA. Alright, and each section in quant and verbal consists of 20 questions. Okay, and in quant you have 35 minutes per section, while in verbal you have 30 minutes per section. Alright, and for AWA, you will be given two essays to write, which can, which is uh, one of them will be issue task and the other would be argument based. And you will be given 30 minutes each to write that essay. Alright, so in, a, in whole, the whole GRE exam will take at least 4.5 hours, including the breaks. Okay. And one thing Im very important to note here is the experimental section, which you would not know during the examination because any of the sections that you appear in will be an experimental section, which nobody com comes to know during the exam. Only after the examination, uh, one, of the exa one of the sections could have been the experimental section. All right? Okay, now a very important question that most of the students ask is how do universities evaluate GRE scores? Alright, because GRE, uh, when the universities know about your GRE scores, they, they don't only consider your GRE score, but at the same time there are a lot of things that go along with it. Alright, most of you I'm sure will be aware of it, but for those who are not, let me help them with that.
All right, so your GRE scores. Okay, guys, do you have any doubts? Meanwhile, you can type in your questions here. All right, so your GRE score is given a weightage of 50% by the universities. And uh, your statement of purpose is given 20 to 25% depending on your factors, your uh, factors like profile. Okay, and uh, your graduation percentage or CGPA academic achievements are given a weightage of 25 to 30%. So, so even if you have an, a decent or a mediocre CGPA or percentage during your graduation, you have a very good chance to you have a very good chance to uh, score high uh, or get into a very good university if you really work hard for your GRE score and if you can get anything above 300 plus. All right. Um, Maitri wants to know she's studying BTEC final year. When should she write her exam? Okay, Maitri. It all depends on your preparation level, and uh, it also depends when do you want to actually go to US. You have two seasons, fall and spring. So depending on that, you need to decide. And the most important factor that should decide your uh, GRE right examination date is your preparation level. All right. Okay, Mohammed wants to know if uh, you have a very good graduate score but a very low GRE. Well, Mohammed, as I said, your GRE score is given 50% of weightage. So you cannot ignore that. Even if you have a very good graduate score and not a very good GRE score, the university might not consider it a very good overall profile. Okay, so you need to work hard for your GRE score as well. Okay, guys, you uh, you must be aware of uh, the statement of purpose, right? How many of you are aware of SOP? Do you have any confusion regarding statement of purpose? Okay, statement of purpose is a a letter or a Okay, somebody wants to know about, uh, okay, yeah, Sunit, definitely I would like to elaborate more about SOP, that's what I was telling. SOP wants to, actually most of the university that you apply to would not only consider your GRE score, okay, they would want to know if you are actually uh, capable enough to pursue the courses you are applying to, okay. So for that, you need to write down what you want to study at your uh, university that you have applied to, why do you want to pursue that particular course and uh, what experience you have regarding that particular course. Plus, they would also like to know what are your plans once you achieve the degree, what, what will you be doing. So in a whole, you have to uh, tell them your past, your present and your future about the course. All right. Okay, Arvaz wants to know what is an ideal profile for MS from MIT USA. Okay, Arvaz definitely a very high GRE score. Something above 320 plus is definitely required by MIT USA. Besides that, if you have a very good internship and project done in the course that you have applied to, it will definitely be helpful. And moreover, uh, how you write your SOP also matters. Okay, moving ahead. How many guys actually feel very comfortable in GRE verbal reasoning? Okay, Kathy says she's not comfortable with GRE verbal reasoning. Raj says he is comfortable. Prakriti says she's comfortable. Kathy, okay, not comfortable. Okay, guys, I would like to know what are the problems that you face when it comes to GRE verbal. Okay, Vedan says vocabulary. Okay, most of you feel vocabulary is a, is a thing that gives you a tough time, isn't it? 
yeah, Keshav has a confusion when it comes to words because most of the words, I mean, most of the time it happens that two words have the same meaning. Okay, Akhila has a problem in vocabulary and reading comprehension. Uh, yes, totally agree with Akhila. Most of the students have problems in RCs as well. Okay. Okay, uh, Om Prasad wants to know how we remember a lot of words. Well, uh, Om Prasad will uh, help you with that. Just uh, keep on listening to the seminar. The seminar is all about that. Okay, guys, uh, before I, uh, we take on this question, Okay, how to remember a huge word list? Okay, most of you are asking the same doubts. So I assume most of you are having Okay, I assume most of you guys have the same problem of remembering a lot of words and uh, to actually master GRE verbal, one needs to at least remember 3,500 words, unique words. So how many of you are actually game for that? Or how many of you have already mastered that? I agree 3,500 words. It's way too much, but guys, you actually have to go through those words before appearing for GRE verbal. Okay. Okay, somebody says uh, they have so far able to go through 800 words. Somebody says 2,000 words. Okay, guys, let me ask you, if you have actually gone through those many words, how many of you actually remember them? It's not about mugging those words. You need to un understand their application and you should be able to retain them even during your, not only during exams but even after that. Okay, uh, Vemuri wants to know how can we remember that many words. Vemuri will help you with that as we as you move ahead in GRE verbal reasoning, we'll help you with that. So don't worry. Arvaz wants, okay, Arvaz uses mnemonics to help him remember those many words. Nice. Nice, Arvaz, that's a very good technique to remember the uh, the words. Prakriti says she's using one word each a day in my, okay, Facebook still. Very nice, Prakriti, that's a very good technique to use, to make use of Facebook for the right purpose. Okay, before uh, we uh, before I tell you how to remember so many words and how to master GRE verbal reasoning, I would like to tell you that uh, in GRE the verbal consists of three types of questions. Okay, first is text completion, and by text completion I mean um, you will be given either one to two single blanks, or two to three double blanks, or even one to two triple blanks. Okay. So based on the type of questions, you will be having different number of questions. And uh, the best part is all these blanks have same points. So even if it is a triple blank, it does not mean you have to spend more time. Okay, you can, if it is a triple blank and it is very difficult, you can skip it and instead move to single blanks or double blanks. You can actually save time on that. Alright, so the takeaway from this is you don't have to uh, you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking that this is a difficult question, so I should answer that and that would fetch me more marks. It does not work that way. You have all the questions of equal points. Alright, so if you skip it, it is actually uh, it will actually help you to save time and you can come back after going through a lot of questions and you can come back to the difficult ones. Okay, then the second type of question that generally comes in GRE is the RC, 
which I am afraid most of you are uh, not comfortable with. But uh, let me elaborate uh, more the type of RC question that generally people encounter in GRE. All right, there are three types of passages that come under the RC section. The first one is short passages that uh, consist of a passage which is of less than 20 lines. All right. Then there are, there are medium passages which consist of 20 to 40 lines and then there are long passages which consist of more than 40 lines. Okay, now if you're wondering how many questions come in all these kind of question, uh, passages, then let me tell you one long passage will at least have four questions while five to six short passages would be there which will have one to two questions each. And uh, medium passages will have two, three, two to three questions each. And at the same time, there will be three to four questions which will be on critical reasoning, which are again very short paragraphs. And you will be asked to answer the questions based on the critical reasoning. Uh, Maitri, you are, yes, you are muted. In fact, everybody, every attendee has been muted. But you can definitely type in your response by typing in the chat box. Okay, Arvaz wants to know how to increase the passage reading speed. Well, Arvaz, the best way to increase the reading speed is to practice as much as possible. You need to practice reading on a daily basis, either by going through a lot of RC passages or uh, journals, articles. Whatever you encounter, you in a daily on a daily basis, you need to read that. Okay. Yeah, definitely, I'll help you understand how to reduce time while uh, going through RCs. Most of you have the same doubt. Okay, just be with me. I'll help you clarify all your doubts. Okay, guys, the last type of question that you encounter that you will be encountering in the verbal reasoning will be sentence equivalence. Okay, generally, total of nine questions across both the verbal sections will be asked. And for that, vocabulary is must. You need to have a very strong vocabulary to master sentence equivalence. Okay. Uh, Rekha, as I just mentioned, there will be three different types of passages, short, medium, and long. Okay. So it's, it's basically uh, profitable for you guys to go through the shorter passages and medium passages first before getting down to the first or uh, very long passages, okay? Because generally a long passages will be more than 40 uh, lines and they'll have only four questions. So it's, it's better to go, um, it's better to go for shorter and medium passages complete them and then come back to the longer passages. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely share the slide with you. Don't worry. Okay, Kathy wants to know, will there be one long passage per verbal section? Yes, Kathy, generally there is one long passage only across the two verbal sections. Okay, how about a bit of a exercise here? How many of you can answer this question? Guys, can you see the question on your screen? This is a, this is a type of single blank question. Okay, how many of you can answer that? Okay, Aditya says gamble. Maitri says two. Okay, I'm sure most of you uh, might not be aware. Might not be aware of the meanings of the words. That is why that is why you're not able to understand which word will go there. Okay, that is why guys, I as I told you, you need to have a very strong vocabulary 
because even a small question like these can can actually can actually give you a tough time in uh, the exam if you don't know the words okay so i'll help you understand the meanings here okay first of all i would tell you uh, i would like to tell that gamble is the is the right answer okay so whoever answered gamble is absolutely right for those who did not who could not answer this and uh, because of the lack of clarity of, of the meaning of these words i'll help you understand see uh, the first word mope actually means to sulk or to brood okay th that is a very negative meaning which does not go with the sentence given here okay because here what what is asked is the children were were doing something in the park which made betty marvel at their youthful energy okay so definitely it cannot be mope if you come to the option b that is to that means to cook okay again th that is out of context and uh, if you talk about c gamble then gamble means to skip or to hop okay to play something like that so obviously that goes very well in the given context and uh, the d that uh, the option that we have frenzy it means uh, rage or passion so again it is out of context in the given uh, sentence all right so c is the right option so guys i i hope uh, you have realized that how knowing the words uh, knowing the meaning of the words can actually make you uh, attempt a question very quickly right okay going forward to the next exercise uh, how many of you are ready for that we have a double blank question here okay guys go through this sentence and uh, let me know the correct answer that you think it is see this is a double blank question you will come across uh, around 2 to 3 questions of this sort hi rajib yes you are a bit late but nevertheless we have just started so if you have any doubts please type in your questions here we'll be happy to help you okay guys uh, are you done with the question so let us find out the answer okay for blank one what do you think is the answer okay khati says competence amit says competence uh, rekha says ability jain says competence okay most of you think it is competence okay uh okay amit can you tell me why do you think it is c no i'm not saying competence is the right answer i just want to know how do you how did you come up with the option okay just for the benefit of all i'd like to tell you the answer for the first blank the answer is ability the option b okay and for the blank two the answer is a merely illusory okay now if you uh, if you want to know the answer i like to tell you that uh, again if you don't know, understand the meaning of these words it will be of no use okay because every other word has a different meaning and if you can just get the meaning right you can get over with this question within seconds okay so coming to the right option ability which means greed or hunger for achieving something okay so which very well goes with the context mentioned here which says that indeed it is very common for people without the right guidance and support to show excessive avidity in a field for which their talent is of little or no consequence 
which directly says the people who generally are not uh, very who generally are not uh, in the right field as per their talent or competence they generally ha show greed to excel in the in that particular field but as we go to the second plan this exaggerated alacrity is dash and is in no way the true outward expression of the real aptitude so here the exaggerated alacrity means the exaggerated enthusiasm okay which is not true because which okay which is not true which means the option a will be suitable here which says merely illusory which wants to uh, tell us that it is uh, illusion this is not true because most of the people who have a particular talent or have a particular guidance to excel in their talents will not be uh, suitable in the field which does not make use of their talent okay i hope you got the meaning guys uh did i make any sense so you want to be explained again okay so in in a way you need to understand the meaning okay because as i said earlier also vocabulary helps you understand meaning of each and every option so without that it is very difficult to win uh Uh, eliminate the uh, options which are not possible here. Okay, the elimination process will not work here unless you know the meaning. Okay, uh, okay, people want to know the explanation again. All right, guys, listen very carefully. See what I meant here was, so whenever you encounter a question like this, when you have double or triple blanks, you need to understand the connection between the blank. and the words around it okay so for example here it says in the first blank indeed it is very common for people without the right guidance and support to show excessive dash in a field for which their talent is of little or no consequence okay so here diffidence will not go because diffidence means hesitance shyness okay it does it, it won't go because here people actually the author wants to tell us that people who are, who have not been guided well who have not shown uh, the right support they show excessive dash which will not go with shyness okay and uh, competence is something that person is very much uh, comfortable in he is very he competence is something uh, some some kind of a skill okay So when when we say a person is competent, he it, it means he is skillful. Uh, let's say he is a, a very good swimmer, then that comes out as a skill for that person. Okay, he is competent in swimming. All right. Okay, so moving ahead. So guys, this was just a glimpse of what kind of questions come in GRE. So, need if you have not yet started giving importance to vocabulary, you need to start doing that. And uh, how to do that, I'll tell you. But but in a daily routine, you need to incorporate uh, reading and uh, building your vocabulary. Okay, because English is one language that you can you come across in your daily life as well. So, if you can just incorporate that habit in your daily life, it will help you a lot. You won't have to. uh prepare any things apart from that okay it will be a enjoyable uh, journey for you even if you uh, give a gri okay uh michael says uh there will be lakhs of words with which words we should learn uh michael there won't be lakhs of words you just have to go through around 3500 words and most of uh, i guess around Uh, at least hundred of them you would already be aware of. So you need to just uh, understand the rest of the words, and obviously that cannot happen in a day or two. You need to practice uh, that with some words per day. Okay. 
I was want to know if there are some good books particularly for this. I was you want to know some good books for uh, vocab or verbal. Okay, I was uh, see for vocabulary there are uh, more than a couple of good books such as Norman Lewis, uh, Lewis How to uh, Crack One Thousand Words or something, but. Uh, See that can happen only if you are actually interested to learn uh, more words. Uh, more words, sorry. Okay, and at the same time, you not only have to learn those words; you need to practice by in your day-to-day -day life. And that can happen if you incorporate reading in your daily life. Okay, guys. Now coming back to the next type of question that we encounter in your verbal is. Sentence equivalence and text completion. Okay, so for that, uh, as we went through one of the questions from text completion, you might have encountered how important it is to understand the con contextual understanding of a word. All right, it is very difficult if you uh, just ignore the words around that blank and just hop onto the choices you have. Okay, so first of all, you you. you understand the meaning of the words that have been provided to you then you have to work around the blanks as in what words are around the back around the blanks and and before selecting any option you need to sell you need to go through the whole sentence and see if it actually fits into the into the sentence or not okay Okay, Jayant wants to know if uh, we conduct these webinars daily. Uh, no, Jayant, we conduct webinars thrice in a week. So you you would be informed about that uh, through your email IDs, and you can also visit our Facebook page to know more about the upcoming webinars. Okay, guys, as you guys were uh, asking me how to learn so many words. All right, so the basic. Uh, basic technique to learn a word is to follow three stages of learning okay the first one is the stranger when you have just come across a word you have just understood the meaning of it and you have understood what part of speech it belongs to okay and uh, the second stage is acquaintance when you to understand the word the meaning of the word you explain the meaning of the word in your own words okay uh, you most of the time it, it might have happened with you that you somebody has told you the meaning of a particular word but then in your own mind you have formed a different uh, formed a different definition of that word okay obviously the meaning remains the same but how to come up to that meaning differs from person to person so you need to understand that and then you have to categorize the word as in what kind of word is it is it uh, let's say different people have different ways of categorization some people categorize into positive words negative words or something to do with place or something like that okay and the fi final stage is the friend stage when you apply the word okay when you after having understood the meaning of the word you apply the word and you use that word very frequently in your speaking your writing and you're able to differentiate the words from other related words yeah We'll be giving you an example loan, don't worry. Okay, for example, let's understand the meaning of the word expropriate. Okay, the definition says the, to officially take away private property from its owner for public use. Alright, the part of speech it belongs to is a verb. Expropriate is a verb and the usage the land was expropriated by the state which means the state officially took the private property uh, or this private land and it put to public use all right and similarly there are a couple of other usage of this word so uh, guys are you uh, with me So, uh, is the meaning of the word expropriate uh, 
clear to you? Okay, cool. So this is a similar manner in which you have to understand the meaning of a word in, in your first stage. Now, the first stage of stranger is over. Now, coming to the second stage, that is understanding the word. Okay, here in this stage, you need to uh, frame your own definition of that word. For example, how we can form that? Um, by expropriating, we acquire personal property officially from its owners for a common purpose. Okay, this is just an example. You need to understand your own, uh, you need to frame your own meanings in your head, okay? But the, obviously the meaning should remain the same. You just cannot overshadow the original meaning. The other example might be the act of acquiring the land for laying a road or building a dam is expropriation. Alright? So anything to do with uh, taking some private property legally and putting it for public use is expropriation. Okay, now this third and very important stage that is the application of word in your day-to-day -day life, uh, for example, in writing, in speaking. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the times you actually come across these words while reading in journals or newspapers. Okay, and especially this word called expro expropriation uh, comes very frequently in newspapers and articles. Okay, Om Prasad wants to know how to categorize the word. Om Prasad, everybody has a very distinctive way of categorizing the word. It depends on you. However you need to categorize a word, you can do that. It is basically the whole purpose is to make you understand the meaning of the word and at the same time to help you retain the word when it actually comes in front of you. Okay? Okay, Madrina, the seminar will be over in some time. Just be with us. If you have any doubts, do let us know. Okay, this we uh, say this word is okay, but some words we don't use how to remember those. Yes, okay, just we, that is why I told you read as much as possible. At the same time, uh, try to relate words with other words. Okay, or try to relate a word with a pictorial object or something that you can easily visualize. That actually helps. Okay, Maitri wants to know the pronunciation. Well, Maitri, pronunciation actually won't be very helpful to write GRE exam, but still if you want to know for your own knowledge, then uh, there are a couple of uh, dictionaries online that actually helps you find out the right pronunciation. For example, Webster, Oxford, okay? Okay, Jayant wants to know what is SC and TC. Uh, Jayant, as I told you earlier, SC is sentence equivalence and TC is text completion. Okay, as I said, uh, if you want to remember words, you need to relate one word with another, which gives the same meaning and understand the subtle differences between those words. And uh, at the same time, uh, practice, practice, practice as much as possible. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, okay, so as most of you think uh, that uh, you are running short of time, we will skip the examples and uh, move forward to the next uh, sections. Guys, a very important thing to uh, understand here is uh, if you can relate the words with some picture or a visual, uh, uh, some vi kind of visualization, it will actually help you un uh, retain that word for a very long time. Okay? And then you can practice that word as many times as possible in your daily life. 
Okay, I'll quickly go through the reading comprehension, how to crack reading comprehension. Uh, guys, uh, since you will be encountering different types of uh, reading comprehension passages, you need to understand which question to go for first. I would suggest you go for the medium and short passages first because they will help you answer uh, two to three questions at a time and that too by going through shorter number of lines. After going through the medium and short passages, you can come back to the longer passage and answer that question. And how, most of you uh, had this doubt of uh, how to improve your speed for uh, reading comprehension, right? So I would suggest to break a very long passage into shorter passages or paragraphs and uh, read that short paragraph quickly and try to understand the meaning and just go through the same exercise with the rest of the paragraphs and then try to find out the meaning, the underlying meaning of these paragraphs and then try to relate that. A very important technique for reading comprehension is to first go through the questions. Okay, before reading the passage, you should go through the questions and that is how you will come to know which is the important section. Okay. Okay, Arvaz wants to, say, uh, wants to know, is the difficulty level same as CAT? Uh, not exactly, Arvaz. Uh, the difficulty level varies and uh, and it is definitely uh, the, it is definitely higher than CAT because GRE actually wants to test your uh, uh, test your language skills here. Okay, guys, I would skip the examples here because uh, I uh, I just mentioned how to go through a passage, so I would skip the examples since most of you are running short of time. Uh, okay, uh, which book to refer? Uh, this is a question asked by Ashish. Ashish, there are a couple of good books that uh, are referred all over the world such as Barron's, Kaplan, Princeton Review. But I would suggest if you don't have a personal tutor or personal assistance, then uh, those books are of no use. You need somebody to solve their doubts uh, whenever you come across any, right? So. Just having a book to go through is not enough. You need to get your doubts solved by some experts as well. Uh, Manisha wants to know if a non-science student apply. Definitely, Manisha, you can apply uh, because uh, what matters is which course you want to uh, go for after you give Jari. And uh, basically, if you do if you do not have any science background uh, in your graduation, then they'll test your uh, GRE subject also. But uh, you can definitely apply G apply for GRE. Uh, Varun wants to know the difference between GMAT and GRE. Well, Varun, uh, it cannot be told in a small seminar like this. You, I would require another seminar to make you understand the difference. Uh, okay, so if you have uh, such doubts, we'll definitely answer you, uh, answer back, Varun. Uh, but uh, before that, i like to uh, have doubts regarding GRE preparation. If, if you have doubts like that, let me know. Okay, guys, these are the useful links to go through if you're preparing for your RCs. This will really come handy in your preparation because these on the, these links on a daily basis publish very good articles related to science, technology, business, politics, which will come very handy in your RC preparation. Okay, uh, Maitri wants, okay, Tejasri wants to know how to attempt AWA. Uh, okay, uh, Tejasri, we, we are at that section only. So, 
before uh, tell you, telling you about AWA, uh, how many of you are actually comfortable in writing? See, we, a lot of students tend to ignore this section because they think what matters is the verbal and the porn section. But it is not that, guys. AWA has been given for a purpose. So they actually want, want to test your writing skills and how you actually analyze a particular issue or argument that they want to know. Because that, that is actually in a way to test your uh, writing skills which will be used uh, later on when you go for your masters or PhD. Okay, Prakriti says you write, uh, uh, she writes some blogs. Uh, Raj says he's a very good writer. Uh, Om Prasad says he's not very comfortable in writing. Okay, okay. I'm sure most of you, especially people who come who come from a science background, they're not very comfortable in writing because all their lives they have been writing uh, questions uh, uh, which are very scientifically, um, they have scientific approach. So you generally don't write too many lines in that. But guys, even if you're, you're good at writing, you need to understand that AWA does not only consider your writing. You need to analyze the given situation and present your views about that. Okay. So in AWA, we encounter two types of questions. One is issue based and the other one is argument based. So some important tips for AWA will be you need to obviously write as much as possible because length definitely matters here. But not only length, quality length. Okay. It should be relevant to the topic that has been asked and it should help you to present your point as clear as possible. And the second uh, tip that I would like to give you is write and practice as much as possible and get it evaluated by an expert. Some people just write essays or uh, write blogs on a daily basis but they generally don't tend to uh, get it evaluated. So it is very important that you start evaluating it, uh, get, start getting evaluated it by an expert okay, who has a command over language and who can tell you what are your mistakes or who can give you a very honest feedback. Okay, Abiru uh, wants to know can we change the order of the section? No, Abiru, uh, I guess uh, your question is very valid and will be answered at the end of the seminar. Okay. But uh, right now, if you guys have any question regarding AWA, please let me know. Okay, guys, the one thing very important about AWA is since you have two essays to be written, one is regarding issue based and the other is argument based. And if you have, uh, if you do not have much practice about AWA, you will tend to get confused with both of these. So you need to understand the difference in the question that is asked because the question that will be asked will be quite similar. In one of the questions you will be asked to uh, present your uh, views over a topic, or over an issue and on the second one you will have to uh, support your arguments, okay? Whatever argument you uh, support you need to validate it uh, as as nicely as possible. For example, this is one of the questions that is issue based. The issue is highlighted in the red part and the question is below that. So you need to understand what exactly the question demands from you and then only start writing. Draw a very uh, rough skeleton of the whole essay that you are going to write and then start writing. Don't start writing. Uh, uh, right away, you need to understand first what is the question. Uh, uh, Varun wants to know how long the essay should be written. Well, uh, Varun, uh, there is no specific length of an essay, but as long as the essay, it is better because uh, most, most of the times it is found that people who get six in their essays have very long essays and obviously as said earlier, length does not really matter. You need to have a very good uh, and qualitative way of writing. You should just not only 
focus on uh, the number of lines but at the same time you need to understand the relevance of the topic as well okay guys this is the second kind of uh, uh, question that is asked in AWA which is an argument topic then there you need to provide with specific evidence to support the argument okay Okay, as I said, uh, what needs to be done to crack AWA, you need to write without errors. And writing without errors is only possible if you practice and get it evaluated by your expert. Okay? And then you need to obviously develop your typing speed because it is a computer-based exam. Then definitely you need to have very good error-free typing speed. And then you need to have a vast knowledge of uh, global topics. So again, uh, reading on a gen, uh, on a daily basis comes very handy. Okay, the the link that I provided to you in the last uh, section will be very helpful if you go through them for both RCs and AWA. Okay, just be yes, spelling mistakes are counted. So you are not supposed to make one. Okay guys, coming back to GRE Quant, how many of you are very comfortable with Quant? Adrena says it's manageable, Amit says he's comfortable. Okay, Prakriti says very, very uncomfortable. Okay. Okay, good to see that most of you guys are very comfortable with quant, which which is normally not the case. But anyway, uh, even if you are comfortable, you need to practice. And for people who are not comfortable, let me tell you how to actually overcome this um, uh, this uncomfort level that you have with quant. Okay, Sandeep enjoys quant. Nice to know that, Sandeep. Exactly, Madrina, uh, time management is very important, especially when it comes to quant. And okay, before that guys, how many of you can tell me uh, what does X and Y stand here? You can see 6% uh, of X got 800, so can you tell me what does X stand for? Yes, Arvaz says number of GRE students. Well, uh, Arvaz, to add to it, X stands for number of GRE students in the previous pattern. Okay, uh, you guys are aware that the GRE pattern has changed since last two years. Okay, and Y is the number of people who appeared for GRE in the new pattern so far. So you can see just 6% of them have got perfect 800 in the previous pattern and only 2% of people have got 170, the perfect 170 in quant. But don't you worry, if you guys practice and uh, clarify your doubts on a daily basis, you would definitely get a perfect 170. Okay. How many of you can actually relate to the problems mentioned in the screen here that you encounter while solving questions in quant. Time management, silly mistakes, weak basics, too many techniques, confusing at times. Some of the topics are not interesting at all. I'm sure most of you must be having uh, problems like time management and silly mistakes. Right, and sometimes you also get to con get to get confused uh, because the same question can be solved through three or four different methods. Right? So how to overcome that? Yeah, Tejasvi says silly mistakes. Sandeep says uh, time management. Yeah, I, as I can see on my screen, a lot of you have difficulty in managing your time. Okay guys, before you 
actually uh, start your preparation with your point syllabus you need to know which sections you are weak in okay and for that you need to uh, go through diagnostic tests and solve questions which solve questions in quant and then you have to also understand what kind of questions you actually find difficult for example data comparison numeric entry data interpretation things like that so so it is very uh, very mature or very uh, i would say a very right way of uh, starting your preparation would be to understand where do you lack and in what questions you actually are uncomfortable okay so if you can figure out that it will help you to work over your shortcomings and improve your score okay uh, i would like to share some of the experiences that uh, people who have got 1 uh, 170 had okay we we interviewed couple of those people who got perfect 170 and what they could tell us uh, i mean how they they could uh, score 170 was one of them said you need to solve questions of higher difficulty okay so that in your actual exam that particular question or that kind of question looks very easy at the same time you need to solve questions which are longer in nature we, what we generally tend to do is we tend to ignore questions which are longer but on the other hand those longer questions are actually easy so you, you should not ignore that but in your daily practice you need to solve as many tougher questions longer questions as possible so that in your actual exam it actually appears to be very easy to you uh varun if you want to know how to practice such questions from uh, which are of higher difficulty you would uh, we would definitely help you with that you, you would uh, you would have to um you would you will have to join a join with us and uh, go through practice sessions that we actually provide to students and at the same time a lot of other uh, institutes also uh, provide you with mock tests or uh, practice gre style tests you can go through that and uh, at the same time you can also uh, find out difficult questions on uh, on the internet especially to if you if you are aware of the topic you are weak in you can definitely find uh, certain questions there but uh, to actually help you with your gre training you should only go through the material or uh, sites that are specially meant for gre because they are the type of question that are that are asked in gre and gmat very completely okay uh, some of the other experiences that the top scorers uh, had provided was uh, due to the adaptive nature of the test one needs to be able to solve higher difficulty level questions from all the topics all right and uh, because of the adaptive nature these test takers would have never got exposed to questions of higher difficulty levels yes guys uh, even if you have uh, like some people uh, some friends who always tell you that quant is very easy or this topic is very easy don't be misled by them because actually every person has a different uh, area of interest in quant so all you need to do is understand that uh, which section you are weak in and practice that and at the same time don't leave any topic uh, uh what do you call it un uh, unattended or uh, go through all the topics uh, that are present in the gre uh, sample uh, syllabus and uh, go through every each and every topic because you never know which section actually uh pops up in your uh, gre test okay guys uh did i make any sense over here so these are the basics uh which you need to focus on while preparing for your gre and uh, uh that was all from my side